Are you ready for me to blow your mind? The Marine Fisheries Commission in North Carolina is getting ready to discuss giving back access to a fishery that has previously been taken away. The reason that they're giving back that access is bad news, which is typically what I always bring. But good news and bad news, depending on your perspective in the situation, striped bass, the striped bass recovery in both the Tar Pamlico and Noose River systems has failed entirely. They have cited environmental conditions as the cause, but they have not listed what environmental conditions exactly. There is some reference to flow rate, but not, not really a checklist of what we can do or how we can do it to fix those things. But in the interim, according to this document, I will link all this stuff down in the description so you guys can find it. According to this document, there will be a discussion for opening a striper season in both the Tar Pemlico and the Noose Rivers, a suggested season of April 1st to 30th, and a slot limit of 18 to 22 inches, uh, with an allowance for a fish over 27 inches. So we have officially broken the universal rule of once they take it away, they will never give it back. Now, the reasoning here is if they're not going to recover anyway, then why are we doing all this? Why don't we let people take these hatchery fish? It is licensed money that funds the hatcheries anyway. So why can the people who are fishing not benefit from that money that they pay for this? And it seems that uh, the powers that be have come around on that. If the recovery is not happening, um, then we might as well keep those fish. Now, that's not actually scheduled to be discussed, I believe, until November, according to the documents. More urgent matters, uh, the Marine Fisheries Commission is about to discuss flounder. The FMP Amendment 4 is about to be discussed on the 20th, and public comments, folks, your public comments matter, okay? They do matter a lot. When we had this recent review of all these processes, one of the suggestions that was made was to show how public comments affect management decisions. I, I only can assume that the reason this statement was made, the suggestion was made, is because reviewing past public comments and looking at the decisions made will easily reveal that the decisions are being made completely independently of public opinion, of what the public wants. And this is America this is our country and government is supposed to work for the people. So even if you don't get what you want by submitting a public comment, that is there, that is on the record, and that matters in the future. It is one of the most powerful pieces of information I can take to legislators to show them why our system is broken, why our system is not serving the people of North Carolina. So go down to the link below right now. One of the big things that's going to be discussed coming up in November, you might as well go ahead and make a comment now. Uh, if they open stripers up, there will be a big push from the commercial sector to put gill nets back above the ferry lines. More than likely, the nets will not go back up. The recreational side, I believe, still has five votes right now. Uh, but go ahead and submit your comment. Tell them, hey, we don't want the gill nets back up there. We do want the gill nets back up there. What, whatever it is that you want. I try really hard to, to ride as much of the middle line as I can. I know a lot of us, I've seen it too, guys. I saw the speckled trout explosion on the noose and on the Pamlico uh, right in sync with the gill nets being pulled. It doesn't really make sense to me based off the data, uh, which, which I do believe, but maybe it was no cold kill. Maybe it wasn't because we didn't have a cold kill in the New River either, and our trout population did not explode. It's kind of hard to sort that out. Anyways, go to the link down there, submit your public comments, tell them, hey, please make sure we do finalize this 50-50. This is going to allow us a little bit of something for flounder. And uh, tell them how you feel about the gill nets above the ferry lines. Again, we're going to have another opportunity in the future. We should have another opportunity in the future to submit public comment for that. The public comments matter, okay? The last thing I have for you guys right now, it is a, it's going to be a very, very short video. Uh, the flounder situation, guys... A lot of you might not know this, but if we actually managed to recover the flounder, you would have as much as four fish per day for the entire year. This is absolutely possible because this is a rebuilding. This isn't like normal things where it just goes down and down and down and down uh, because they're trying to maximize how many fish we give. Flounder are in a recovery period. Uh, they're being managed for recovery. So there, there is the expectation that if we achieve recovery, that those fish will come back to us. So submit your comments. Obviously, you guys have heard me 
I've talked to you to death about trial by catch. I believe it is a major factor in what is going on with the flounder. Um, as, as well as, you know, the, the poaching that's starting to happen now. Um, just because somebody else does something that's wrong doesn't mean that we should all join them in it. And everybody, every single person who fishes in North Carolina would benefit so much from this recovery. Go submit your public comments. You don't have to agree with me, whatever. Every public comment matters. Everybody matters, okay? Everybody has their input. Everybody has a right to these fish. They have equal ownership of these fish. I will see you guys in the next one.